Amen. You can have your seats. You're welcome in the name of Jesus. I want to believe that we all, by the special grace of God, are all doing our best in terms of making the supply. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have continued to share on this window of supply. When we talk about the window of supply, we are not talking about what is coming to us. It's not, it's not the supply from God to us. Amen. It's the supply from us to God. That's what this supply is all about. He said, the same he that descended is the same one that ascended. And when he ascended, he gave gifts unto men. When he ascended, he gave gifts unto men. The same one that descended is the same one who ascended. When he ascended, he gave gifts unto unto men some he gave apostles some he gave prophets some he gave teachers pastors evangelists for the perfection of the saints for the perfecting of the saints another translation says for the equipping of the sin for the equipping of the sin the equipping of the sin for what purpose for the work of the ministry the equipping of the sin for the work of the ministry so you can see clearly that everyone is involved are you hearing what i'm saying everyone is involved in this work of the ministry work of the ministry towards the building up of the body of christ towards the edification of the body of christ so everyone has been given the work the assignment the burden of the lord is for everyone the burden of the lord is for everyone that's why jesus said jesus was the one who said this one directly he said come unto me all ye that labor and what a heavy laden and i will give you rest come and learn of me he's talking to everyone come and learn of me for my burden is what and my yoke is what hallelujah did you see your business there you saw your business hallelujah okay let me rephrase the question <laughs> did you see your personal business there your personal business did you see your personal business so your affairs is not represented there did you see your family there are you sure you didn't see your family your family is in is in the line of business some of you are not you're not sure did you see your family in the line of the business i'm hearing only one voice did i hear yes i once called my my sons and i said to them it's not automatic that because i am a pastor you people are called it's not automatic so better go and find out whether <laughs> you are called <laughs> because some of us think it's automatic that once you are called your wife is called your husband is called and your children is called who told you is it your business it's not your business. It's not your business. That's why sometimes when I see some parents who say they are living for their children, I just look at them and look at some ignorant fools. How can you be living for your children? Is that what you saw here? Huh? You saw your children? 
The day you understand that God is no respecter of persons, that's the day you will sit up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Ah. When God called Samuel, the first assignment message he gave him was what was going to happen to Eli and his children. Eh? That was the message God gave him. God is no respecter of persons. It's not about your family. Some people can't do anything for God because of their family. They are in bondage because of their family. But Jesus said, except you forsake your father, mother, wife, children. Eh? Isn't that what he said? He said, he, he not even for, he said, hate. Is it your Bible or just my own Bible, my own version? Including, you, you have to also hate yourself. Except you do that, you cannot be my disciple. So if you are not ready to do that, you can go and be your own disciple. A lot of, of us, a lot of people are doing that. After all, we, we heard of Jesus of Oyimbo in those days. You can become your own Jesus. Jesus of Ababanike, or uh, Jesus of Emene. <laughs> but if it's this Jesus you're talking about, he said you should do what? Hate your father, mother, wife, children, huh? brother, relation, sister, including yourself. So there is no provision for your family. Peter abandoned his family. How many of you know that? And was following Jesus up and down. It, well, for all of them that were married, they abandoned their families. Hallelujah. So, the business is, does not include you, does not include your family, doesn't include anything that has to do with you. It is the business of God. Amen? Amen. Now, these are the things that if you don't pick them, you know, it's a, a little leaven, leaven at the whole floor. If you don't pick them out, Huh? They will continue to shortchange your journey. Amen? They will continue to shortchange your journey. Some people are killing themselves for their children. The children that will forget them when they grow up. <laughs> That's why many of them will start fighting with their wife over their son. <laughs> Take is over. Is the price you pay when you're, you're not following the word of God. Hallelujah. Uh, if you are following the word of God, that will not be your case. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, when your children grow up, you, you say bye-bye to them. Can continue your own journey, your own life. Some people, they say uh, children are investment. You are investing your, your, uh, in your children so that when you grow old, they will look after you. It's only in Nigeria we talk this rubbish. Abroad, once you are old, they carry you to nursing home. That's where they go and dump you. It's only, it's only in Nigeria that we care after our parents. Abroad is nursing home. That's where they go and dump them. Now, these are the realities of life. Amen. This is what happens when you overlook the word of God. When you follow through with the word you can be sure that God will be the one looking after you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You do whatever you have to do for your children and you set them off. Children are not investment. You set them off on their own journey. God is the one who will continue to take care of you. The Bible says that we will continue to bear fruit even in old age. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If God is the one taking care of you, even in old age, you will still be bearing fruit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh -huh. you, still, you, still be, you still be able to have people that will take care of you, whether your children are there or not. Amen? Especially if you are busy in the kingdom. You will have many sons, daughters, fathers. Oh, people will be struggling to take care of you. Because even as, as you are getting older and older the grace the grace and the anointing will be will be too much hallelujah so he gave some apostles prophets teachers pastors evangelists for the work of the ministry it's all about you it's all about you jesus ah, 
Holy Ghost and he is It's all about you. Hey, it's all about you. What do I wish? All about you is in everything. Yeah? Total surrender. Uh -huh. That's why the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to do what? To please God. For he that cometh to him must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. So if you do not believe in God and you are here, you are wasting your time. Simple. You must believe in him. Hallelujah. And the, the, the fact that you believe in him means that you are going to stick everything. Because that's what it means. You lay your life down for him. You can't do that if you don't believe in him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because he's asking you to lay everything down. It's only someone that you trust that you will agree to lay down your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So if you don't trust him, that's why I say he that cometh to him must believe that he is. It's not because um, uh, okay, 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 for believes. Therefore, you believe. You are believing because okay, okay, okay believes or because okay, for believes. It's not because you believe in him. Because if you don't believe in him, you can't lay down your life. You can't lay down your life if you don't believe in him. In 2000, when the Lord spoke to me, he said, labor not for the meat that perisheth, but labor for that that endureth unto eternal life. It was God who spoke to me. It was a question of whether I was going to believe the one who spoke to me, or I was going to believe those that were ahead of me in quotes and i remember in those days when i will be sharing this truth some people will come to me and say who are you are you greater than this man of god this man of god this man of god like it has to be what they are saying not what the lord is saying hallelujah and of course as long as what i was saying was not consistent with what their geos and their father in the Lord and their great, great men of God were saying, I was a lunatic. It to them, it didn't matter. It didn't stop me. <laughs> I remember when they when we wanted to do our radio program and uh, our own Pastor Ike was approached. The only um title that could come to him for our radio program, he called it the voice of one. The voice of one. <laughs> as far as he was concerned, that was the one person that was saying something that was different was from what every other person was saying. But I didn't care. Amen. <laughs> I remember in those days, early times, it looked like, at some point, it looked like, what? How come nobody is getting this thing? And the Lord said to me, he said, don't, don't bother yourself. You may think that you're not doing anything. But the reason why I have raised you up is because I want you to be speaking these things into the atmosphere. And as long as you are speaking it, it will continue to counter whatever they are saying. He said, he said to me, it's a spiritual battle. And I should not relent. Whether it's only one person I'm seeing in church or two, it does not matter. That I should continue to speak. And that with time, it will permeate into the atmosphere and will begin to affect and turn around lives all over the world. It will only take if you trust God to believe such a jazz. People are, are doing the one they can see physically. And God is telling you to be speaking into the atmosphere. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I thank God that, that today, God has been vindicated. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because it's, no, it's, it's not just me anymore. There are thousands of people who have gotten the message. Hallelujah. And they are all over the world. So the kingdom of God is moving forward. Hallelujah. This week that just passed, the great evangelist in the world called evangelist Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn. Many of you know him. Benny Hinn, the Benny Hinn you know. Yes. yes. The Benny Hinn that you know has confessed that he is guilty of deceiving people 
with the prosperity gospel. He confessed it this week. The Benihin that you know. Mm -hmm. So if you like, be joking with what you are hearing. Be looking for great men of God. He, he said something. He said that he has gotten to a point in his life that he cannot afford to be doing things the wrong way. That he wants to end right. He wants to end with God. So he must, he must do the right thing. He said he must do the right thing. That the prosperity gospel is not biblical. Hallelujah. But this is the word of God. He said, labor not for the meat that perishes, but labor for that that endureth unto eternal life. Thank God he's, he was humble enough to come out and confess. There are still so many people that are deceived. So many people. But you know, God said, his word, he said, he said his word, there's nothing you can do against his word, but for his word. Nothing. So, I want to encourage you to continue to stand by the truth. When it, when, when it, it even looks like you don't know what you're doing. Amen? Continue to stand by the truth. Stand by the truth. Except, except you, you have chosen to deceive yourselves. If if you can engage your mind, if you can engage your mind, you will know that these things are vanity upon vanity. And these are not the things that you build your life upon. Hallelujah. You don't build your life on stuff. He said, he gave some apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, evangelists, for the perfecting, equipping of the saints for the work of ministry towards the edification of the body of Christ. So you are here to be equipped for the work of ministry. That's why you, are, that's why you, come. you don't come to church so that God will give you breakthrough and breakthrough. What are you doing with breakthrough and breakthrough? Amen? What are you doing with breakthrough and breakthrough? That's not why you are called. You are called, you are here. The, uh, the only business we have here is to equip. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Otherwise, we have no business gathering here. We should be out there in the field. All of us preaching the gospel. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The only reason why we are here is for the equipping of the saints not to come and receive a breakthrough and break forth for the equipping of the saints so when the saints are equipped they go out amen when the saints are equipped they do what they go out for the work of the ministry they go out to work equip you go out equip you go out equip you go out that's how it works not breakthrough it's not about you it's not about any of those things the kingdom of god is in need of laborers is in need of laborers people that would commit to working in the vineyard amen and i want to believe that many of us here are going to commit amen we are going to commit to walking in the vineyard of god because god needs laborers so that's why when we come here we don't we don't have time we don't have time for frivolity because the saints need to be equipped so that's why we don't talk about your personal stuff are you hearing what i'm saying we don't have time to talk about your personal stuff what we do here is to equip for the work of the ministry. And once you are equipped for that work, that power, the Bible says he gave his disciples power. He called them out and gave them power. Hallelujah. Turn to Luke chapter 10. Chapter 10, verse 1. Luke chapter 10, verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither himself he himself will come therefore he said unto them the harvest is truly great 
but the laborers are few. He said, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. He said, Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither paws nor screed nor shoes and salute no man by the way. And into whatsoever house you enter for say peace be to this house. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. Hallelujah. If not, it shall turn to you again. And in the same house remain, eating, drinking such as things that, as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house, and into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things that they are set before you, and heal the sick that are daring, and say to them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you not. Go your ways out into the streets of the same, and say, even the very dust of your city, which cleaveth on us, we do wipe off against you. Not withstand and be sure of this. The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Woe unto thee, Chorazin, Chorazin woe unto thee, Bethsaida. And if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which had been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. Thou, Capernaum, which art exalted to heaven, shall thou be thrust down to hell. He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in, in spirit. Amen. In that same hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. So you can see clearly from what has transpired here that this is what is important to God. Amen. He said in that same hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto thee. Even so, Father, it seemed good in thy sight. So we are all babes in God. Amen. Hallelujah. So he has hidden these things from the wise and uh, prudent and has revealed them unto babes like us. Amen. <laughs> Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father. No man knoweth who the Son is. But the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and to whom the Son will reveal him, he turned him, he turned, and he turned unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see these things which you see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear, and have not heard them. So you can see clearly the need of the kingdom of god how that even whilst jesus was here it was very very necessary and important for him to begin to send out the apostle he said whichever house you enter declare your peace and if there is a man or son of peace in that home the peace will rest but if not the peace will go with you amen so you are a career of peace. Do you know that? Amen. Remember how we how we landed where we are today. Remember we were talking about how to earn the right to speak to mountains. Amen. How to we started from how to unlock the power of the spirit. So until you position yourself in the harvest, 
The power is made available to those who are interested in the harvest. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why he said, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. So the power is made available to those who are effective, who are working in the vineyard, who are interested in the harvest. He called his disciples huh? and appointed them two by two. Praise the Lord. And he gave them power. The power is for those who are walking in the field. Amen. For those who are interested in the harvest. They are the ones who are given the power. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why he said to them, Any house you enter, declare your peace. So, already because they are involved in the harvest, they are, they've already become carriers of peace. Hallelujah. <laughs> I say hallelujah. They have already become carriers of peace. And my question is, how can you be carrying peace and the peace will not be touching you? Is it possible? Is it possible for you to be carrying peace and the peace will not be reaching to you? It's not possible. <laughs> You can't be carrying peace and the peace will not be reaching you. It's not possible. But you have to come to the place where you can even be eligible to carry the peace. Because if you are not eligible to carry the peace, you won't have any. Hallelujah. That's why I say, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things to come. You can be a, a career of such and it will not be reaching you. It's not possible. That's why he say, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. You can be a career of peace and the peace will not be touching your home. That's the surest, the quickest, the fastest way to be anointed. Amen? The surest, the quickest, and the fastest way to become anointed. When you are busy sharing the burden of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the quickest, the fastest, and the surest way of becoming anointed because whatever you know when you are carried there, there there is there is an anointing there is grace that comes immense grace that comes upon you because without that grace you can't you can't minister you can't do the work of the ministry that's why he said tarry ye in jerusalem until the power from on high shall come upon you. You can't minister. You can't be involved in the work of the ministry without that grace. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can't. It's not possible. And it's not something you conjure. It's not for selfish purposes. The Bible says the gifts of the spirit are given for common good. It's not, for, it's not a personal thing. So it is your love for the work. To share the burden of God. Because grace comes upon you. To share that burden. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is that grace that comes upon you. In the course of sharing that burden. That is the anointing that rests upon your life. And that anointing doesn't lift. It runs with you. No, you didn't understand what I just said. The anointing that comes upon you. That rests upon you. During the time... That you are sharing the burden of the Lord does not lift. It stays with you. That's why I said that is the surest, 
the quickest and the fastest way to be anointed. That's how you earn the right to speak to the mountain. Because when the grace comes, it rests. It doesn't lift. That grace, when it comes, it doesn't lift. It stays. It rests upon you. <laughs> it rests upon you. It doesn't lift. So you can understand why God will, will want you to be found, to be located where, you know, anytime God is looking for you, he wants to be able to see you in the field. That's where he wants to see you all the time. When he looks out, you are in the field. Amen. When he comes to talk with you, he comes to discuss his business with you and to know the challenges. Amen. Uh -huh. The challenges that you are facing in the course of the business. So he comes around for business meeting. That's what happened now when he, he came looking for Adam and Eve. He, he was, Bible says he came to fellowship with them as usual during the cool of the day to discuss the business and he realized they were hiding so when he left them they went about another business and so when when it's, when it was time for him to fellowship with them they were nowhere to be seen because they were already involved in another business hallelujah so if you are interested in the grace of god awesome grace of god to continue to rest upon your life that means that you must be a committed worker, laborer in the vineyard. Amen? Praise the Lord. A committed worker in the vineyard. That's who you must be. Hallelujah. And as you do that, you're going to discover and assess the grace of God upon your life like never before. Amen? Now, Remember I said to us, I, I'm not saying these things because I want to excite you or to give you the reasons why you must be involved in the business of God. Amen? You can choose any other business. Amen? You are free to choose any other business. He said, to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Who has believed the report of the Lord? And to whom has the arm of the lord being revealed he said father i thank you that you have hidden this from the wise men the wise and the intelligent and you have revealed this unto babes this is what is guaranteed to take you into a new wonderful glorious relationship with god amen it's something that when you get involved it's something you would experience for yourself. These things are better experienced than told. Amen? It's better for you to experience it. You know, there are some experiences that cannot be explained. No matter how best the, you know, the teacher tries to explain such an experience, you can, you know, at best just give an idea, but it's not it's just a tip of the iceberg amen it's not the whole picture it's better experience than told it's something you need to experience amen so that you yourself will not struggle to explain it to another person <laughs> hallelujah you need to experience it it's an experience it's a wonderful beautiful experience knowing to share the burden of god carrying it as your own and God begins to, to open you up deep into his business, into his affair. And you begin to know things. You become his friend. God is looking for men and women that he can consult. Amen. Hallelujah. He's looking for men and women that he can consult. That's why uh, Apostle Peter was speaking when he was talking about what we can do i think we'll just um we'll get to that uh scripture and then we can go from there okay let's go to second peter chapter 3 from verse 10 he said but the day of the lord will come as a thief in the night 
in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, uh, seeing that everything, all the things uh, that is presently are in you will be what? Dissolved. And the elements shall melt away with fervent heat. Seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of god wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat uh, my interest is 11 and 12. He says, Seeing then that this thing shall be what? Dissolved. Nothing in this world is worth it. Do you know? <laughs> Nothing in this world is worth it. One of these days I'm going to share with us on a topic I call how that what you don't know will always blindside you. What you you're always blindsided by what you don't know. I'm going to share on that topic very soon. I'm not sure you after such a message you will even be able to walk out of the room because then you will know that you know nothing. But we'll get there. It's a seeing then that this thing shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Now this is the part that interests you and I. Verse twelve. It says looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God. Looking for and hastening. Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God. Where in the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the element shall melt with further heat. Now, when I was reading um, Benny Hinn's uh, interview, he said, I think it was in 2009, he said the Lord gave him a prophecy. The Lord told him that at the passing of our robbers and Billy Graham, that there was going to be a great revival that was going to come upon the world. And then he said, he said that he he's praying and asking God for persecution because he knows that um, persecution has to come so that he himself will continue to be purified unto the coming of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And when he when he said that, you know, it struck me because I remember one day I was sharing with us here, and I was telling us, and I said. I was asking God and I said, God, I know that you have allowed the shaking in Nigeria because you love us. But I know that you have men in every part of the world. Does that mean that we don't, is it only in Nigeria that you have your remnant? Because I know that your remnant is in other parts of the world. And when he said he was praying and asking God for persecution to come in America, because he knows that's, that's just the way, you know, the the remnant will be woken up. I shook my head and I said, this God is wonderful. Amen? Because the Lord said to me, he said, I am going to shake. He said, I'm going to shake the whole world. Do we know how it's going to happen? Nobody knows. <laughs> but he's, he has already said he's going to do what? Shake. So it doesn't matter any part of the world. He said, oh, Nigeria is terrible. You are running to America. Run to America. <laughs> the shaking is coming there. Amen? <laughs> God is going to shake the whole earth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's going to shake everything. It's going to shake everywhere. So it's not about running to anywhere. It's about opening your eyes to this window of supply. And key in. Because in that place, you can look for and hasten the coming of the Lord. Because that's, your, that's why you're here. 
looking for and hastening unto the coming of the Lord. Because that's what happens in that window of supply. God begins to share with you his business. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. And in that business, you can be directly involved. You can be directly involved in the coming of our Lord Jesus. And you know, he's talking about hastening. Now, you can, you can enter a place where you are in a position that you are now hastening. Do you know what it means to hasten the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? That's the opportunity God is giving you and I. That's why he's asking us to get involved in his business. Because that's what will be happening. When you get involved in his business, you are in a place, a position where God is interacting with you. God is consulting with you. Because you know, remember I said that God is looking for men and women. You know, if you say he's looking for men and women to just stand in the gap, it looks like um, deja vu, the, you know, business as usual. It's not about standing in the gap. It's more than standing in the gap. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God is looking for men and women that he can trust to consult with them on how the kingdom, the coming of our Lord Jesus can be hastened. So you are going to be directly involved in hastening the coming of the Lord. So God will be making things known to you. He will be revealing things straight from his heart. He will be making known his agenda. Just like when he was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He couldn't just go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He had to consult Abraham, his friend. And he was not just going to tell Abraham, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And off he goes. No. Abraham had impute. Abraham had impute. Because Abraham was able to ask certain questions. Imagine God listening to man. He said, if you find 50, 50 righteous men, would you destroy the righteous with the unrighteous? And God said, no. If I find 50, no way. I won't destroy. Hallelujah. So you, God is looking for men and women who he can be consulting with to hasten the coming of the Lord Jesus. Men and women who will be giving impute, be making impute to the Lord. As he reveals, we make impute. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. We'll be making impute. I told you guys that at the height of Boko Haram, I was one of their biggest supporters. And the reason why I was supporting them was because I wanted the church to wake up. I was supporting them. You will not believe it, but I'm telling you the truth. I supported them because I wanted the church to wake up. But when I saw that video, the, the man made, where he was now boasting in the strength of their God and was now telling the Christian how he was going to come and cut off their head and let him see how their God will save them. That was the day I said, this is the beginning and the end of Boko Haram. From today, you will continue to go down. This, on Thursday, we had our fellowship. We prayed on Thursday. By Sunday, for the first time since this Boko Haram incident started, the Nigerian army chased back Boko Haram. And that chasing back has continued till today. If not, if not for that thing that I saw that, I was praying that they will come down to this east and chase people. But after I saw that video, I said, Boko Haram, that's your end. He said, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you lose on earth shall be loose. Our business is to hasten unto the... Anything that will give rise to the coming of the Lord faster. I am for it. But it's not about you. Amen. So this is the business of the kingdom. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's how the business of the kingdom is persecuted. It's not about emotions or how you feel. Uh, whether your bread and sugar is buttered. It's not about, <laughs> it's not about you. Amen? Hallelujah. You get involved in the business. Looking for and hastening 
unto the coming of the Lord. So God will be speaking to you about whatever that is happening and you will be paying attention and as a co-administrator, your input is very, very, very needed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you make input, the Lord hears. When you make input, he hears. It's a kingdom. And everything that will be happening in the world will be following that part of the kingdom. It's what the kingdom dictates. Whether the people like it or they don't like it. Amen? It has to be the kingdom. That's what you and I should be watching out for. In our communities, in, in our land, in our, in our home, everywhere, we should be looking out for the kingdom of God. Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the Lord. I don't know whether there is any greater business than this one. As far as I'm concerned, that's the best business to do. That's the best business to engage in. And when you engage in this business, when you become God's advisor, yeah? you become his advisor. He who has already said that he doesn't consult any person. But by his mercy and his grace, he has a right to accommodate you and consult with you. Huh? So his grace has brought you into a place where God is now consulting with you. You are God's advisor. Now how can you be holding that position and be an ordinary person? It's not possible. Yet. Now becoming God's advisor does not mean, you know, that's, that's the beauty of, of what God is doing. He gives opportunity to everyone, both poor and rich both big and mighty, both small, whatever. Every person has opportunity to do what? To walk in God's venue. And you can become relevant to God with or without money. You don't need money to become relevant to God. Amen? You don't need money to become God's advisor. So the moment you, you be open up yourself and commit yourself to his business, to the business of his kingdom, to looking for and hastening unto the coming of our Lord Jesus. You become relevant in his kingdom. And like I've already said to us, great grace, great grace, great grace comes upon and rests upon the lives of every advisor of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You don't require money to be his advisor. You don't require anything to be his advisor. Just commit yourself to him. Amen? Praise the Lord. Can we stand up and have